Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. And today we're gonna be doing something really exciting. This is one of the questions I get asked about the most uh, or asked about the most on my last box truck build. And that is the pass through access from the cab into the box. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Pretty much all the U-Haul vehicles that you find the truck, the truck cab chassis and the box are two independent pieces. You can see right here, there is light straight through from one side to the other. And so if you look at the inside of the truck, um, you can see there's a solid fiberglass wall. There's a jump seat in the middle. But what I like to always do is on my rigs, I like to have access, easy access from the cab into the box and vice versa in case for some reason I need to uh, go from the box into the cab in a hurry. Here is the pass-through door that I ordered. And so this is, let's see, there's a tag on it down here. You can see right here. So it's made by Lippert Components. They make a bunch of RV stuff. This one is uh, 22 inches wide by 42 inches tall. And so they make these uh, for access into like um, storage compartments or, you know, teardrop trailers, that type of thing. But you can see it's a really nice door. Um, it's got a full, you know, weather strip on it. It's metal aluminum construction. It's got a, uh, a locking key with it. And uh, so you can lock it right here. And I don't know, overall, they're just really nice doors. So that door, we're gonna install it right here in the center, boop, like that. And we will need this piece. This is called accordion boot. You can get this. I bought this on eBay. You can also just type it into Google, accordion boot. And basically it's a piece of rubber that has two metal clips on each side that run the full length of it. So the first step is to make a template of the door. Uh, make sure you use a big fat marker and a heavy piece of cardboard. I used the box the door was shipped in because I knew it was big enough and sturdy. So once you kind of trace out the template of the door, then of course you just take a razor blade and trim the cardboard back. Looking back at this video, I should have used a new razor blade. This one was pretty dull, but uh, just make sure you're cutting up against a straight edge and uh, obviously go all the way around. And then once the door, uh, the whole template is cut, then I always do a final measurement, especially for something critical like this cab access. Once you cut that hole, if it's too big, it's gonna be a nightmare to try to go back. So again, here I'm just double checking width and height to make sure that the template is good. And the template was good. So now we're gonna go ahead and mount the template up on the wall and trace the template shape onto the wall of the cab. All right, all right, so here we are all set up. We got the template on the wall. I wanted to show you a quick tip how to center uh, an item like this within a wall. A really easy way to use math. All you do is you measure the entire length of the wall So in this case, the wall is 92. So you go ahead and put in 92 into your calculator. And then you measure the width of your item that you're trying to center. In this case, 21 and 21 and 3 quarter. And you subtract that. So 92 minus 21.75, 75 is 3 quarters, equals 70.25 inches. And then what you do is you know, um, basically what that means is all the space left minus the cardboard is 70 inches, 70 and a quarter inches. So now what you do is you divide that number by two, 70.25 divided by two equals 35 and 35.12. So now you know all you have to do is measure on either side 35.12. And that will, if, if one side, oops, if one side of the cardboard is at 35.12, uh, then you know that it's centered within the wall. So now that we have the template, we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the wall. I used uh, six pieces of painter's tape. The blue tape is really good. It won't, uh, won't leave any residue. And then just go ahead and trace around the template with your same big fat marker onto the surface you're gonna be cutting through. And yeah, definitely good to use like a big Sharpie or something because ultimately when you're 
cutting your hole, there's going to be dirt and debris and dust flying everywhere. And, um, you know, you don't want to use a small pen or a pencil and then lose the line or have trouble seeing the line while you're cutting. So definitely grab a big fat marker and go ahead and trace out the template. And then the next step will be to start cutting into that wall. The first thing we're going to do is run in a spot bit. So we're going to drill a hole uh, through the cap. And now here's the catch. Uh, with this situation is, you know, we have the box wall we have to drill through and then there's like a five inch gap in between the box and the cab because these are two independent structures the box and the cab are not connected so we got to go through this wall which is like an inch and a quarter it's like over two inches thick and then we got to go through the five inches of empty space and then we got to go through the cab which is about three quarters of an inch thick but we got to do it all in one shot that's the only way that we can really ensure that both of these holes are lined up exactly. So anyway, we're gonna use the spot bit first. I'm gonna blast a hole through just to get started. And then once the spot bit is, or once the hole is created, then I'm gonna come back with the sawzall and we're gonna use this nine inch sawzall blade. And that should give us enough clearance that we can again cut through both uh, both the cab and the box at the same time. So this is a little bit nerve wracking. Um, you know, I haven't done this in like two and a half years. And so I'm like, I mean, I'm not nervous, but I'm just like, you definitely gotta be careful and take your time and just, you know, slow and steady, baby. So here we go. So let's go, we'll go like here. Here it is, guys. The hole's cut in the wall. Crikey. Okay, so here is, give you guys a quick little peek here. If you look through, now you can see the hole, the gap, and then ultimately you can see the uh, hole in, into the cab right there, right? So that's it. That's the whole meat and potatoes. And then check this out. So here's the, uh, the nine inch Sawzall blade. And I'm gonna use this Milwaukee Sawzall. It's rated for wood with nails. So that should be a good, uh, a good tooth pattern to use for this. Cause we're cutting through. You can see the edge of it now here. There's wood. This is the trim I put on. This is the two pieces of foam. And then back here, this is the original um, wood of the frame. So anyway, but you can see if I put the blade in, let's see, we'll go like that. And so you can see, if I go all the way, let's see if you can see it. There you go. So you can see the tip of that Sawzall blade is hanging out the inside of the cab by like about a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then out here, you know, we got quite a bit. You got a couple inches here that it's hanging out. So it's plenty long enough to be able to cut back and forth and cut both uh, walls at the same time. So one thing I did here, uh, definitely recommend it, is put down a whole line of painter's tape on the good side of your wall. If you're cutting on a finished wall, it's always good to use this tape because the tool you're cutting with, in this case, a, a sawzall, or even if you're using a jigsaw, uh, you know, the vibration can end up scuffing up your finished surface. So I, that's why I'm doing the blue tape here is just to make sure that the finished side of the wall that will remain in place doesn't get scuffed up or scraped or anything. And uh, it's not 100% necessary, but just from years of building, I've realized better safe than sorry. And it only takes a couple seconds to go through. And, uh, and add that through tape. So now we're getting into the best part, guys. Time for the cutting. So I used a Sawzall for this. I think it's really the only tool that's gonna get you that nine inches of cutting depth. So the trick here is just go slow and steady. Don't race, uh, don't push yourself, and use a brand new blade 
Uh, you might even consider swapping out and doing uh, a brand new blade like halfway through. The key here is you just wanna go slow and have a really nice smooth cutting process. And using a new clean blade will just help you be that much more precise. With the door, drop it in. Boom. There it is. That's it. Love it. All right, so pastures cut in. The next step is I'm going to be adding a piece of FRP stands for uh, fiberglass reinforced panel. I'm going to be adding a piece of uh, thin FRP to the back of the fiberglass hat, uh, cab. And the reason why is the FRP is going to stick out a little bit and then that will give me something for the accordion boot to clip onto. And so this is something that you'll just have to take my word for it and follow along. And once I get into it, then it'll make sense, right? So just trust me. And uh, so the first thing I'm, I'm doing is I'm taking measurements of the opening. Now it's, it's definitely not straight, but by the time we're all finished with it, it'll look really pretty. Um, but so basically what I wanna do is I wanna have the, F, the measurement that's a few inches more than the width and the height. And so the rough opening is about 23 by 42. And so I'm gonna go ahead, since the, the sheet of FRP is 48 by eight feet, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 48. That gives me an extra six inches, so three inches height, three inches bottom. And then for width, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go 27. I'm gonna go 27 width. So all I need to do now is cut the FRP down to uh, 27. And then I went ahead and mounted up, the. Uh, this is the FRP panel. So I didn't, uh, I didn't film that portion, but all I did is I took the original cardboard template that I cut out here and I laid it on top of a sheet of four by eight FRP. It stands for fiberglass reinforced panel, uh, which you can get from Home Depot. And I cut, I cut that opening out here. And then I cut, I left about a three inch border all around the side here and then I put down some uh, adhesive I use power grab style adhesive which uh, let's see if I got some here here looks like this so this is the adhesive I like to use whenever whenever I can Loctite power grab all-purpose they also make a heavy duty if you are um, trying to secure something that's really heavy anyway so I put a fat bead of power grab all around the cab the fiberglass cab and then I just smushed down this piece of FRP and then I used um, self-tapping screws every about every eight inches to kind of help secure it in. And so between all that, it'll hold this piece in place. And then I'll hop in the cab, give you guys another look at it. So you can see here, this is all the FRP here. Right here, right here. And so what happens now is the door goes in and then I put the boot on and the boot clips on the door and then the other half of the boot will clip onto this FRP panel. So wherever you start the panel at, you know, then the end is gonna come right up and butt to it. So on the last build, I started in the center, but then the problem is when you're walking through, sometimes you step on it and then it just kinda, you know, it creates an issue. So. Um, what I'm going to do this time is off-center it. I'm going to have the edge be over on the side so that when you're walking through, there's not a tendency to step on the seam. So basically, you just push it down like that. Boom. And there it is. And then you just work your way along the edge like that. Like this. You just push it down as you go. The corners are pretty, pretty easy, pretty smooth.
here's what it looks like. This side's already done. So let me see, you guys can see the seal there. And uh, it just clips right onto the door. And then in here, uh, it clips right onto the edge of that panel, that fiberglass panel. And it creates a waterproof seal. But the important thing too is because the cab and the box are two separate pieces, when you're driving, they move independently. So you can't have a rigid connection from cab to box, or you, when you flex the truck, you'll, you'll snap whatever wood or whatever you try to build here, you'll just bust it up. So it has to be a flexible seal. All right, and that's another one in the books, just wrapping up the cab access door. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of the build, honestly, just having that nice door that looks really finished and it firmly closes into place. So I hope you guys uh, take away some good info and you're able to do your own version uh, on the box truck that you convert.